And, uh, but, <laughs> but as I was up talking to our band, that was Sunday morning, and we were just having a conversation, and we were just talking. And Lord, just, you know, these, these are the good guys. And I started thinking about the whole crew here, all of the men, and how, you know, the world has made it, you know, they celebrate bad guys. Like, you know, the bad, the bad swag, the thug, the, you know, all of that. They raised that image up. Like it was a cool thing, macho, the dude that had all the women, the dude, you know, they celebrated all that in music and movies and different things, and now they're taking all those guys down. That's the devil, just taking them down one by one. And so, you know, God began to deal with me, like, you know, tell, talk to the men and let them know it's okay to be good. It's, it's, it's okay to be a good guy. It's okay to practice goodness. No matter how mad you get, it's okay to forgive and not, not fight. Amen. 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 Not be a brawler. You know, not depending on what somebody did. <laughs> but if it's just a bunch of talk and all of that, I mean, you just have to just move on, let it go, and, and, and forgive. And, uh, and, and do good. Be the good guy. You know, just let it go. And uh, that's, you know, kind of something that God has been dealing with me with. So I want to walk you all through this real quick. And um, if you have questions at the end, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with them. But it's okay to be good. Goodness is a fruit of God's spirit. Goodness is love in action. So we can all say we love, but unless you're doing good towards someone, you don't love them. So you can't say, I forgive them, and yeah, I love them, and you still saying it like that. Right. <laughs> you know that. Oh, no, I forgave him. Then, you know, goodness is love in action. Like, if you really love them, you're going to let it go and just let the goodness of the Lord uh, uh, heal your heart and, and you not retaliate. Amen. All right? Amen. So even on your job and just especially with in-laws and family because people are going to be coming after you more now than ever before y'all thought y'all thought they called y'all cult members and called this church a cult yeah folk gonna have something to say and we gathering and don't care and yeah they they're gonna have plenty to say but you got to show goodness you got to show the goodness of the lord and you just got to let it go you got to understand they aren't attacking me they're they're attacking truth they don't have a love for the truth if they don't have a love for the truth, they can't receive it, right? So you got to end those situations. The fruit of God's spirit, to know his spirit is in you, you got to do good. And, you know, um, that, you know, that's something that, you know, you, you need to be proud of instead of, you know, who you whooped and who's... You know. <laughs> I remember that, you know, you come in a fight, you come out of a fight or something, and you feel like you... Whoop them, you just go telling folks, yeah, man, I got him. I got him. You know, if you lost, you don't say nothing. <laughs> Heard you had a fight. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we, you know, we're of a different, we're of a different uh, mindset because we have the spirit of the Lord in us. So we're not brawlers in here. So we're going to do good. Amen? Amen? And especially in this hour. So three things. In order to have the goodness of the Lord and to know you have the goodness of the Lord and to do good, to do the goodness of God's spirit, you got to have good thoughts. Say that with me. Good thoughts. Good, thoughts. good, decisions, good decisions. And good intentions. good intentions. That's the goodness of the Lord. So we can all talk about the goodness. You know, the, and I'm not putting down the old church. I learned a lot from the older saints or whatever. But man, they could say this stuff, but... Oh, cause it's just the goodness of the Lord. How many of you in the goodness of the Lord? And then as soon as they get in the car, they talking about the past and talking about the members and talking about folks. And oh, I can't stand her. You see what she had on? You see how she thinks she's so just uh, that's not goodness. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But uh, anyway, back to this: good thoughts, good decisions, and good intentions. These are this is how you show that the Holy Spirit is in you. You know. You can speak in tongues. You can do all of the things that the Bible says you are empowered to do under the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, all of those things. But 
All those things come after the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. The fruits of the Spirit is what should ignite in you when you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And this fruit, goodness, needs to be in you. Doing good, good intentions, good decisions, and good thoughts. So let's talk about it. Good thoughts, we always act on the things we think on. If we think on evil things, we will act how? Evil. evil. This is why the Bible gives us these things to think on so that they will become real in our hearts and direct our actions. So, and before I read those things, we have to remember that the things we think, think on are the things we're going to always act on. So if you're thinking evil thoughts, if you're thinking, you know, and that's what the devil wants to do. He wants somebody to say something, to do something, to provoke you to feeling different, coming out of yourself, harboring something in your heart, whatever it is. Then once that thought pattern starts, the evil actions are going to are going to follow because you're going to have to depart from God to act that out. You can't have evil thoughts and stay in the presence of the Lord. Yeah, and you can't do good on your own. None of us are good. The Bible said, no, not one. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So it's going to take God's spirit to do good. Right? Yeah, to do good. You know, folks always say that, well, you know, he's an atheist, but he, you know, he's a good guy. No, he's not a good guy. If he's an atheist, if he's an atheist, then any good he's doing is for himself. Any good he's doing is for attention. Any good he's doing is for an earthly reward. And in the Bible, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, if it's not the spirit of God doing it, it's not good. So if we think on evil things. We will act evil. This is why the Bible gives us these things. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren. And these things aren't just in here so you can wrap them in Jay's song. This is, <laughs> this is real. This is real right here. This is the things that we should be thinking on. Whatsoever things are what? True. You should be thinking on what is true. And it's, 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 it's no coincidence that you came to a ministry that teaches truth and we talk about truth. And now that the world believes a lie, you know the truth about the lie. Amen. Right? You think that's a coincidence that God wasn't preparing you for this time where you can see through every headline? You know when it's loaded with lies, you just know it. Right? Because you're looking at it because you've been thinking on things that are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Be, look at somebody and say, be honest. be honest. Think on things that are honest. Don't think on lies. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. These are the things that you fill your heart with lovely things pure things just things honest things and true things these things will make you a good person a good man right Amen. Amen. we must arrest our thoughts that are evil if we expect to do good every man that does evil first considers it and then did it yeah, you didn't just do evil and be like, no, no, he didn't know. No, you considered it first and then did it, right? right. Well, you in control of yourself, right? Amen. Now, if you're not in control, you're control of yourself, I'm not talking to you. But the regular people that's in control of themselves, <laughs> they thought about it first. They considered it and then did it. So we must take these thoughts captive before they alter our behavior. Right? That's the main component in this vax that they are putting in people. They want to take away people's ability to take their thoughts captive. That's, that's all it is. They want to disable your guardian electronically. If they disable your guardian, you aren't guarded. Yeah. 
2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity what? <laughs> See, here it is. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So listen to this. Now let's read it without the old school church, I know this scripture mentality. Really read it. Casting down imaginations, that's things that come in your mind that are against God. Every high thing that it exalts itself. So anything that's trying to take you away from the presence of God. And then bring it into captivity. Every thought, making all your thoughts obey what Christ wants from you. So this is the pathway to avoiding sin. Here you go. This is how you avoid Getting in that situation and doing what you wish you hadn't done. You don't wish you hadn't done it till you do it. <laughs> yeah, because if you wished it before, you wouldn't do it. Oh, I wish. Oh, I hope I don't do that. Nobody say that. <laughs> you said no. Man, I hope I don't do that. What? <laughs> You're crazy. No, you're going to cast down the imagination, even imagining it. You know, you're going to sit and think about it and the high things that exalts itself. This is how you avoid sinning and keep your thoughts good. Our thoughts are only as good as what we condition them with, right? So if all you watch and listen to is murder and killing, your thoughts are going to be on murder and killing. If all your music is cussing you out and, I mean, a fang, shooting a finger at you through the radio. Yeah. If you listening to that, that mess, then you're, uh, that's conditioning your mind. Somebody cross you over, uh, cross over in the road, road ray, you turn into crunchy black. Because you was listening to the 3-6 Mafia the other day. Now you crunchy and black. And for the record, he is crunchy black. <laughs> but yeah, so if we um, our only our thoughts are only as good as we condition them, are only as good as what we condition them with. So whatever you're conditioning your thoughts with, that's what you do every day. What are you doing every day? Is there a time in the day where you get a uh, a, a uh, scripture in you read a scripture you listen to something you listen to a praise song you do something is there a time in the day that you condition your thoughts with what God wants them conditioned with that's 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 how good your thoughts are going to be if you spend the whole day in other stuff that you shouldn't be into your thoughts are going to be as good as those things if we only take in the world or constantly listen to worldly people, then our thoughts will be evil. The Bible is the conditioner to keep good thoughts in us. When we start our day or end it with the word of God, we are conditioning our thoughts, which in turn helps us to what? Do good. Do good. Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow, and this right here. And is a what? Discerner. Discerner of the thoughts and what? Intent. So the word can take a sword, cut through soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and alter the intents of your heart. Yeah. So it goes in spiritually and it produces something naturally that's what this is saying yeah it goes in spiritually when you read it but it produces goodness and natural actions y'all seen the hardest of the hard negroes when they give their life to the lord for real and get saved you don't even recognize me like dude like you ain't the same person yeah because the word of god came in change the intent of their heart Amen. so that's why we need the word to condition us because if the word conditions us it makes us different and we can 
have good thoughts instead of bad thoughts. Amen? Amen. Good decisions. In order to make good decisions, the right way has to be accessible to you. So if you grew up on the wrong, right, wrong side of the mountain, you may not know how to do good in a lot of situations. This is why a fellowship is so important. God brought many of you here because of all that you missed growing up. Amen. Yeah. So God brought you here because the word that is being taught here is for men. Yeah. We are the heroes, and then on Sundays, everything is pretty much, if the men act right, we can pretty much make it happen. God wanted you here to learn the things that you missed. And so many of the things we miss from proper parenting, churching, or mentoring can be received in a community of strong men. Yes, so a lot, just, just being here, just being in the midst of strong men, you learn things and you're able to correct things that were absent in your life. And men here will challenge you, men will admonish you, and we'll help you. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 27 and 17, iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. So the community is very important in making good decisions. The decisions are only going to be as good as where you plant yourself. Amen. Yeah, you plant yourself at a church with a woman pastor, you're going to be an emasculated man in your home. There's no way she can pastor you without emasculating you. Can she? Can she, can, can she make you strong? Can she sharpen you? Is she iron? Not at all. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Think about it. Nobody ever thinks about that. They tell me, man, you know, I, you know, my pastor's a woman, but I know how you feel about that. How I feel about it? How do you feel about it? You get emasculated every time she gets up. She's telling you what to do. In front of your wife. That's emasculation. And it's not biblical. Matter of fact, it's anti-biblical. They flying straight up against the word of God. That's what you want to do? Well, times change. Really? The grass withereth and the flower fadeth. But the word of God will always stay. It doesn't change. I serve God. That's one of the things I love most about him. He doesn't change. Man, if he changed, everything would be just as messed up as the world is. That's the world's problem. Change. Man used to be the head of the house. Man ain't the head of the house no more. Change. Man used to be a man. Man can be a woman now. Change. I don't need that. I need consistency. What did you create? What happened in the beginning? I need that all the way to the end. I need alpha and what? Omega. Beginning and what? Then that means there's no that that means he never changes. Amen. Iron sharpeneth iron. God is the ultimate counselor. And if we would consult him before making decisions, we would always make the right one. Did you pray about it? Folks tell me, yeah, I prayed about the getting a, get, getting a shot, and man, you know, I feel a release from the Holy Ghost. Oh. <laughs> that same release you feel is the one that got you in debt, too. Yeah. <laughs> and you made you marry that monster. <laughs> I don't trust your releases. <laughs> All of them have been bad. <laughs> I prayed and done. Uh, Sometimes it don't take prayer. Sometimes you can just read the label. Yeah. Don't need to pray over no pig feet. Oh God, touch these maws and fat foot. These fat feet. And Lord, help them to be nourishing to my body. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And I, you can't pray over no pig feet to be nourishing to your body. How are you praying on that? Check the ingredients. 
Lord, don't let the smoke of this blunt linger in the name that is above If What you praying? That's stupid. Well, that's the same as praying for the vax, man. How you praying over an experiment? And they telling you that you, it'll never come out of you. You've altered your body forever. I don't have to pray about that. I'm taking my chances of whatever's floating in the air. Whatever variation, variant area, I'm taking my chances. God is the ultimate counselor. And if we consult him before making decisions, he, uh, we would always make the right decisions. He will speak through a scripture, a sermon, or a spiritual leader. Amen. So when you ask God, should I do this? What, what, what? Wait. Right. Just wait a little bit. Yeah. Don't be expecting to hear it right then. Right. It ain't good enough for him to speak to you like that. Right. Amen. You ain't. No. You ain't wait. Let him speak to you his way. He ain't going to sit there and demand that he talk to you. Yeah. Let him choose how he wants to come. He might come in a vision, a dream. He may send somebody. Speak through the sermon. Speak through a scripture. Amen. But this is why the devil has attacked pastors and churches in this last hour. He knows that many of the decisions you are facing can be answered by a godly shepherd. He knows that. Jeremiah 3 and 15. And I will give you pastors, God said, according to mine heart, which shall feed you with what? So some knowledge and understanding is only going to come through God's pastors. Amen. It's funny that everybody that's preaching against church and organized church and God is not using pastors anymore. Everyone that is, is, is preaching and believing that is, are mad at a pastor. They all had a bad experience with a pastor, so now they're deciding that God is not going to work this way. Good decisions are only good if they line up with God's plan. Amen? Amen. To know him is to know his plan. This is why it's so important to understand God's plan for you and how he speaks to you. Listen, it's very important to understand how he speaks to you. God speaks to you like you hear him. Amen? Yeah. He knows, y'all believe God knows how to get your attention? Yes, sir. Yeah, so he knows how to speak to you. He knows how to answer you. He knows. He set it up that way. So you need to know when it's him, but you need to know him to know his plan. Amen. Anger, resentment, hatred, and malice will always cause a man to make bad decisions. Why? Because those are traits of the devil. And if you are angry, resentful, hate you hate folks or you're malicious against people then you're going to always make bad decisions because you are acting emotional god is not emotional amen god will let you cry and cry and it ain't gonna change nothing he's gonna do i'm serious he's going you can cry till snot and blood is coming out and God is going to say, okay, you're done. Now go do what I said. Yeah. Because if you had done what I said, you wouldn't be here crying. Yeah, you crying because of what you did. What does that have to do with God? And so you have to remember that. But to know him is to know his plan. This is why it's so important to understand God's plan for you and how he speaks to you. But anger, resentment, hatred, and malice will always cause a man to make bad decisions. Emotional decisions are what? I told y'all. Oh, I told y'all. That time when I was 17 years old. And thank God I did it when I was 17. Some folks doing it old. And I walked out on my band teacher and really thought I was getting him back. I thought I was paying him back. Walked out on the band. And sat there in the audience, and they got this little guy to replace me, and the band went on. And I sat there, and I, I still feel it to this day. I feel the regret.
to this day for that. He was such a good guy. I had a four-year scholarship to Texas Tech <clears throat> waiting on me, free ride, just from playing. And I blew it, being a 17-year-old, just being stupid. But man, don't do that as you get older. Don't you make an emotional decision because you'll make a decision in the heat of anger and, and then when the smoke clears, you gotta live with it. Yeah, I'm 52 and that happened when I was 17. And when, it, when I bring it up, I still feel like, oh. <laughs> I mean, really. And you know, that wasn't even really that big a deal to most folks, but to me it was because now with the mind I have now, I wish I hadn't done that. Thank God I got no kids here to see it or a wife to see me do it or to take a whole family down by doing it. But I experienced that and that's when I learned and that was my lesson at 17. Don't make emotional decisions because they don't go away. It's forever, forever. They keep you feeling regretful and shameful. These decisions will make you hate your life and want a do-over. And that's what a lot of men do. They, they think that, you know, they make an emotional decision, but they usually manifest it by a divorce or something. They'll divorce their wife, go get another wife, have a whole other set of children trying to erase something that happened the first time. They, they think that's really a do-over. And they don't realize it ain't no do-over as long as you there. <laughs> you the problem. And it don't work. They don't feel no better. Then when they look up, they want the first wife back. Man, I made an emotional decision. I need to go back to her. Walk in the house and big old dude is in there. What you doing here? She my woman now. Yes, I made... You made an emotional decision. You see what I'm saying? And what you gonna do? Like what you gonna, how you gonna, how you gonna do that? It's gonna keep regret, keep, you're gonna, it's just gonna be regretful and shameful. These decisions will make you hate your life. Proverbs 14 and 17, a man of quick, supposed to be quick, man of quick temper acts foolishly. Somebody that get mad quick, they gonna do dumb stuff. What? You know that dude? Just, he's dumb. He's as dumb as he is angry. Yeah, quick temper, you're going to act foolishly. And a man of evil devices is hated. So not only are you going to act foolishly, but somebody that's always doing folks wrong, nobody likes him. So you got to be very careful with your emotions so that you don't make a bad choice because you're in a bad emotional state. You know, my motto is, my wife will tell you too, I stick to it. If I'm feeling a way, I'm angry or something, I talk to very few people, very few. Cause I'm, you know, if I'm mad, I mean, I'm gonna say mad stuff. But I, you know, some stuff I want my wife to hear and I'm not gonna make no decisions at that time. Amen. If I'm at angry. I don't be calling them cussing. Oh, the old blue to the like, yeah, that's right, Pastor. <laughs> we ain't no Baptist elders. <laughs> don't talk like that. But I will go in. If you know, if I'm upset, I mean I'm a man. Especially when I can't do nothing. You know, God don't let me do nothing to nobody. <laughs> so I just have to take it. <laughs> this old me, this whole meekness thing. But I'll call and, and just go off because I don't want to make a decision based on that. You see what I'm saying? I want to just let it out, calm down, then we'll deal with it. Or I'll deal with it later, or most of the time it ain't worth dealing with. So I've learned that. I don't want to make an emotional decision, and I don't want to make a big decision based on an emotional state I'm in. That's the worst. That's the, just the worst time. You regret that. Some of y'all married somebody because of that. And that, that wasn't a good idea. But you got to make it work now. These, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I ain't making no. Yeah, man, just be careful with that. These, they keep you feeling regretful and shameful. 
Oh, oh, I already read that. Okay, a man of quick temper acts foolishly and a man of evil devices is hated. Are your motives pure? Do you want more money so you can show off and stick it to your haters? Every time you want something, car, house, or whatever, you need to check it and make sure you're not getting it to stick it to your mother-in-law. I made it personal, didn't I? Because she said that your wife was marrying the wrong person. So you want to get something new and take it to her house and show her that she was wrong. And once you show her, you got the note. It's like, uh-huh, see, you was wrong. And then you go home. Ooh. First of the month, come, you're like, dog. I went a long way for that, didn't I? <laughs> I should have called somebody. But yeah, you don't want more money. You, do you want more money so you can show off? Do you hate certain people because they have what you don't have? Are you angry, resentful, or malicious toward people because you really hate what happened to you in your past? Bad motives will always lead to failure. Always. If it's the bad motive, your heart is not right, it's going to lead to failure. Proverbs 4 and 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Your intentions must be good in order for you to do good. That's logical, right? When you do things motivated by a negative, then you are not doing good. Even if it's a good deed, if you're motivated by negative, you didn't do good. Yeah, if you're giving money to help somebody so they can tell people, so people can think you have money, you did a good deed, but it wasn't good. You did a good thing for somebody, but it wasn't a good deed. That wasn't good because your motive was wrong. The devil told the truth to Eve. But it wasn't a good truth. It was the truth. Told her that if you eat this, your eyes are going to open. And they did. But his motivation made his actions evil. So even though he told the truth, it wasn't a good truth because of the motivation and his actions. So make sure you don't do things motivated by negative. God doesn't bless that. Amen. He lets you get your earthly reward. If you did it so folks will clap for you, God's going to let you get the clap. Yeah, and that's all you're going to get. Get the clap for that car that you got 72 more payments. They gave you the first one free. You really thought you got something. First payment free. <laughs> we'll get it on the back end. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me, that free payment is woven <laughs> into this payment plan. I promise you. <laughs> that payment didn't go nowhere. It did not vanish. It still exists. Yeah. And so you do things like that to please people. You look up and you regret it. First Samuel 16 and 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. I don't want him. But... For, uh, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh what? On the outward appearance, but God looketh what? On the heart. So in order for us to do good with the goodness of God's spirit, our heart has to be right. Our intentions have to be right. The motivation of why we're doing it have to line up with what is right. Amen? Amen. That's how you have good intentions. Make sure you are doing things with good intentions. Not motivated by something negative, but motivated by the goodness of God's spirit. When our intentions are pure, God blesses us. If you want to be blessed, make sure your intentions are pure. When you give an offering, your intentions have to be pure. Amen. Right? God said... He's going to return it to you. Good measure. Press down, shake it together. Running over shall men give unto your bosom. So you're going to get blessed for giving, but your intentions need to be pure. Amen. Amen. I'm giving this because my life would not be the same without the word I've been receiving. 
This word has changed my life. What I'm receiving from this church, I can't pay for, but I'm going to give to it. I'm going to dedicate it. Amen? I'm going give to give this to the Lord. Pastor here, he's proven that when the doors open, he's here. He don't miss. He ain't somewhere smoking a cigarette. He ain't driving up late and making everybody stand up when he comes, then leaving early and don't want to shake nobody's hand. He's in the crowd with us. He's talking to all of us. He's just one of us. He's proven he's one of us. He's just the pastor. So, man, why not give to that? You know ain't no games getting ran with your money. We got all the money you gave in the bank. It's, we still have it. Ain't nobody running games on you. How many times have we got up and raised an offering? How many times we got up and asked you for something to do something? We don't do that. I don't have to. So, you know, everything has been on the up and up. So, this is good ground for me to, to give to. Right? Yeah, so give with a pure heart. Our intentions at this church are pure. Yeah, ain't nobody trying to coerce you out of your money. We don't talk about it. We don't even discuss that. When our intentions are pure, God blesses us. He grants us everything we need to do what he planned for us to do. When, when, when our intentions are to do it his way. I was tired today. He grants us everything we need to do to do what he planned for us to do when our intentions are to do it his way. Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. For what? So if your heart is pure, you'll see him. You'll see him. And not just when he returns. If your heart is pure, you'll see him now. You'll see him in everything you do. You'll look at your life and know that God has christened your life with his presence. You'll know that there's no way you could, there's no way you could make it day to day if it wasn't for him. You'll know that if you are pure in heart. Amen? Amen. So I got a prayer here that I'm going to pray, that we all going to pray. And this is just a prayer about what we just talked about, just a clearing of the heart and making sure our, uh, that, that we have the goodness of the Lord operating in us. So, Lord, I repent for not doing good things. Purify my thoughts so that I can think good thoughts that will keep my behavior pleasing to you. Help me to overcome all deficits and trauma of my past so that I will not make emotional decisions that wreck my life permanently. I do not want to spend my life wishing I had listened. Oh, I do not want to spend my life wishing I had listened. I want to hear you now. So speak to me and direct my decisions. And God, clean my heart so that my intentions for others will be the same as my intentions for me. Help me to regard the feelings of others so that my motives will be good and I can wish good upon them. I pray that my motives will always reflect yours and that I will always consider you with my intentions. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, any questions?